Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, today we are going to have a cool tutorial for you here. Uh, we're going to touch base inside ZBrush and do some Substance Painter and then take it over to Marmoset. Uh, what we're uh, looking at today, we are going to be making this pretty little material ID that I have uh, tried to make in the past through ZBrush but failed horribly and come to find out there is a really cool option inside Substance Painter that pretty much does it for you. So I will definitely take you in there. I will supply you this model here, this little alien probe. Uh, you can see the construction down over here in the bottom right here. Uh, it was just some Z modeling I did. You know, I probably whipped it up maybe half hour, 45 minutes, you know, just trying to figure out a design that I want and then getting it to work, and then I did my whole Greeble element thing there to get all these cool panel lines, but the thing that I've been running into is I can't hold on to all those panel lines, uh, at least material uh, and ID wise, I wasn't able to hold on to it, they came out kind of muddy, uh, when I say muddy I mean they blurred together, and as you can see here they came out beautifully, and I will show you how to do that. So. Without further ado, let's shut him down and we will go into ZBrush. Alrighty, so for starters I need you to uh, unzip that file which is in the description. Uh, it's, uh, it's the Alien Probe. So open up uh, Alien Probe Demo. And we're not going to go into Z modeling today. Uh, I did everything for you. I know everything here works, so we shouldn't have any problems. So we'll drag him out on the canvas. He looks a little, looks a little wonky there. Uh, he's made up of two different subtools. Uh, I've got. Let me throw him on solo here. Put on the lines, poly line, poly fill, and you can see this is our uh, low res model that we will be working with today. He's already ha he already has UVs set up, so everything will flow quite nicely. Uh, and it's all based off of the polygroups here, so each one of these polygroups has its own shell, UV shell. So it will make it quite easy to uh, add materials to everything. So let's go take a look at our high-res model. Okay, he looks... Uh, quite chaotic there. Let me turn off the line part of the polyfill. And this is basically going to help us with our normals and our material ID, ambient occlusion and all that. Just a little like uh, in the, my previous video, uh, Build a Starship, which you can go check out if you want to figure out how to create these nice little panel lines all over here. But the thing to note here, how we're going to make this uh, ID map work is each one of these has its own is it's its own individual uh, mesh. So, and it's comprised of I think four or five different meshes that I decimated down. I think he is at uh, under 600,000 polygons. So, and it's just a matter of uh, decimating each one of these shells down. So let's take a look at this guy here. Okay, that's the very bottom one there. Let's take a look at him. There you go. Turn double on so you can see him. And each one of these is comprised of something a little bit different. Let me hit this pink one here. And so all that information is going to flow over to Substance Painter beautifully. I've already done all the work for you. So it's just a matter of going into... Let's go ahead and just do you just really just do an export. That's all you got to do for this tutorial. We're not here for Z modeling or anything like that. Like I said, I did all the work for you. Uh, just uh, leave them the same name. So save high, uh, Alien Probe high, and now I'm going to replace it. And then, because I already did this earlier, and go back up. And if you look at your subtools, there's only two of them here. And all you have to do is just do an export. Like I said, there's already UVs on this character. So just save them. 
and that's it. So basically, the, the thing to remember is that each one of these is its own mesh, and so all that information will transform, will transfer over to the material ID. I mean, it made it super simple inside Substance Painter to do so, and I guess if I read the documentation, I would have found it a long time ago and would have shown you a better way. So what I showed you in the previous video, just totally disregard. This is a much better way. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to pause you real quick and we're going to jump into Substance Painter and see how this all comes together. Okay, here we are in Substance Painter. Uh, we want to go ahead and do File New. We're going to create a new project. Uh, change it to 2048 and we're going to go in here and select our mesh and it's going to be the demo that's our low one as you can see it's under 400k uh, 400 meg or uh, it's not it's not even a half a megabyte so it's really good for uh, game engines and sketchfab and marmoset which I will take you into af at the end of this video so we'll open him up we don't need to add anything else and there he is we can take a quick look around him looking good just our low res here came over beautifully so now we want to bake all our textures so the only one we won't need is thickness and we're going to change the res to 4096 we're going to load in our high and then go to your ID click on him and we just need to change one thing here the color source polygroup sub mesh ID there you go and now all you gotta do is hit big texture I'm gonna pause this real quick and let it do its thing alright we are done baking all our textures as you can see in your uh, texture stack here or your texture set is baked them all nice and pretty uh, you got your normal world space ID, ambient occlusion. If you want to take a little close look at them, you can open up your little shelf here, hit your textures. You can hover over it. We'll hover over the material ID real quick. And as you can see, it's created uh, a nice little map. I know some of it looks like it's blurry. Uh, that's that's just on the where there's no UV information. It just kind of blurs it out. So don't worry about that. So let's go ahead and slap a material on here and I'll show you how this material ID really pays off here. So let's go ahead and I will start with this machinery. It's quick and easy. You can always make your own. It it's not you're not limited to just smart materials. You can tweak all these settings so machinery does take a little while to generate as you can see it's still processing it it's pretty complex uh, material and there we go so let's go ahead and I'm just gonna fix one thing real quick it should be under our paint here and that's the mask builder let me scroll down do ah, the bottom intensity we're gonna lower him down to about there kinda gets rid of some of that rust there give it a second to reprocess there there we go so it kind of kind of dulls it down just a little bit for us so we can take a quick look around here check him out so let me put a let me just add a white mask to him real quick and I'm just gonna fill in a couple of these uh, spots here that I don't want to have this texture on so just go to geometry decal click UV because I already set up the UVs nicely so we'll click on the little iris and then on the pupil at least that's what I think they're called and then back there on the thruster the interior thruster anyways alright so I know you're waiting for that material ID coming up real fast here we're gonna go ahead and apply a different smart material and we'll put it right above the machinery alright that's the tire rubber just right click on it add mask with color selection now here's where that material ID can, 
really comes in handy. So pick color, and there we go. Now we can see our material ID, and I'm going to select that red. And I'm going to do one more color here. Let's go ahead and do... Let's go ahead and do that blue. There we go. Cool. We can take a quick look around here. You can also, uh, you're not limited to just that color selection to make your mask. All you have to do on here, actually right there, right, right click and add paint. It's its own little uh, kind of filter. And then you can do the same thing like we did on that mask earlier, except we want to make it white. Because I want to make this whole thing right here, that tire rubber. So let's go back to, okay, we're on geometry, decal, so just click it. There we go. There we go. That makes that look better. All right, well, let's add a little pop to it here. Let's go ahead and do, uh, there's a, if you scroll up here, there's a chrome blue. Let's add him on top again. And just like I said in previous videos, this is all built on layers and masks. I mean, it's a lot like Photoshop. If you're used to that, you'll become pretty accust accustomed to this. And then we're going to go ahead and add a mask with color selection. We're not going to make a whole bunch of stuff chrome. We're just going to make a few things chrome real quick. So let's go ahead and pick a color here. I think I'm just going to go with this little guy here on the fins or whatever they are. Turn around, take a look here. Pretty cool. I like that. Uh, let's see, I want to maybe add a little more love to that uh, particular material. Like I said, we can always modify this, so I'm going to go to the very top layer in that group, in that folder, and then hit plus. And then we're going to right click it and add a fill. All right, so we're on the fill there. We want to turn off color, height, metal. All right, so now we're just controlling the roughness, and this will control the overall roughness of that material. So you can drag it up and down, and you can go all the way to reflective, which doesn't really look that realistic. So we're going to go ahead and click on the uniform color here, and we'll pick, let's see, uh, black and white spots three. Click on him. All right, it looks pretty cool so far. Change your UV projection to tri planner projection, and we can scale him. And we don't want to scale him up too much there, because we don't want to see repeating patterns. And then go ahead and right click on that fill and add a levels. Change the base color to roughness. And now we can fine tune that uh, roughness. So we can manipulate it a little bit there. We can make some parts super shiny. And it's just like a levels adjustment inside Photoshop. So some parts are super reflective and some parts aren't. You know, it's a little like Chrome gets after a long time. It gets oxidized and all that. So so if you hold down Shift and your right mouse button and drag it, you can roll the roll the light around or the environment. Just so we can fine tune that guy a little bit more. pretty cool okay so let's go ahead and yes I know I'm still fiddling with that always trying to replicate what I did before but that's all right all right so moving on let's go ahead and add one more layer or one more uh, smart material and like I said you don't have to use the smart materials I just like them they're quick and easy. I can pop something out super fast. 
And we'll go to the scratch steel, throw him on top. Make sure you don't throw him into another folder. Give him a second to process. We will go ahead and add a black mask so we can fine tune our selection. Go ahead and click that geometry decal. And we're going to do it, it's set up on UV and it's all the way to the whites. So that's what we want. Click on him. Turn him around. I want you to click on him. Oops. And then you click on the inside there, it's fine. And there we go, we got our basic material set up. Click back on the brush. Pretty cool. And we could do, let's go ahead and create a layer here. We already got one up top. Uh, I want to add a fill. We're just going to add our curves over it. So we just need, I just want it to be a, a color map. And then go down here to curvature default mat. And then put it on the base color. You won't see much right away. I, and we want to change the layer to multiply. There we go. So now everything, now it's all multiplied. So all the dark parts will project onto it. So we can turn him off and see the difference. So it looks like he needs a levels adjustment. So it just stick to the base color. That's all we're manipulating here. So this way we can get all those parts back out. So it doesn't dull down everything so much. There we go. Adds a little bit to it there. Looks like a little bit of normal or curvature uh, artifacts there based on the this weird little deformation here. Let's see if we can just get rid of it with the levels here. Yeah, for the most part. Something I'll just have to live with. Alright. Cool. Adds a lot to it, doesn't it? So, let's go ahead and we're going to throw in just scroll up here and go to where is it at? I believe dust. We're going to put him right below that one layer we just made. So this way our curves are still on top. Our curvature is still on top there. And it just adds a little bit of dust to everything. As you can see a couple speckles up here. Just adds a little bit to the whole model. Alright, cool. So on let's go ahead and add a white mask and I just want to get rid of it out of that out of his pupil there. I just wanna I don't want him to affect that. So go to decal UV and change him to black. Click him. There we go. Now he won't affect that that pupil there. So let's go ahead and get our our uh, eyeball here and let's get our thrusters let's give them a little love here because these are thrusters under here too let's give them a little bit of a glow so what you have to do real quick go back to your channels and set up an emissive and let's go ahead and click on him new layer Let's add a fill. We'll set up a emissive channel so we need to turn everything off. Emissive color, let's go ahead and change him to a blue. Let's add a, another fill layer. Okay, he's on top, good and it's another emissive but we will add a, a little texture to it 
And now with this one, I think we just need to we need to change our emissive to an emissive layer and change him to multiply. There we go. Now add a fill. Nope, not a fill. We need levels adjustment. Add levels. Change that to emissive. There we go. There's our emissive channel. Make it glow a lot more. But it gives you that nice little speckled pattern there. Alright, so now let's go ahead and add a black mass to him. So we can select where we want it. Geometry decal. Change it back to white. It's still set up on UV, so all you gotta do is click that. And you can turn on your uh, symmetry. So we'll get both sides here. And then go to the back and click him. And there you go. We'll turn symmetry back off. Our model super duper fast. Took us less than 10 15 minutes just using the smart materials. And you can build your own smart materials. It's just a matter of uh, building up these layers. As you can see, Chrome Tint has got several things to it. Quite a bit, actually. You know, same thing with tire rubber. And then that machinery's got a got a bunch to it. So, and then all you have to do is just say, like, right-click on that particular folder, and you can just go down and create smart materials. That's it. You just have to create a folder full of uh, your information. Uh, just make sure you uh, take off the mask before you save it, because I think the, the mask will follow it along. So, and your mask will not reflect all your other models, so there's no sense of saving that. So, real quick, let's go ahead and save him. So, I'm going to save, save over this other one here, which is fine. So, let it do its thing real quick. It may take a 30 seconds or so to save him, but it won't take too long. Uh, it does create about half gigabyte files. Uh, so that's the only downside to this program. It creates huge files, but what it can do is just amazing. So if you want, we can take a look at him. We can do viewer settings, click shadows on, hold down shift, right mouse. We can turn him around there. So we can check out the shadows there. Uh, let's see. What do I want to show you here? Uh, I've showed you in the other ones uh, the the effects here. This is just for the internal viewer. It doesn't have anything to do with anything else. Maybe someday uh, we can get nice, uh, pretty uh, pictures out of uh, Substance Painter. Can't wait. I know it's coming soon. All right, so here we are admiring our model again. So we need to do uh, one or two things here just before we leave, uh, before we save off our files. So what I need to do, or what we're going to do, so click on the top ones there. I need to drag him down. Get him down. So let's go ahead and... We'll hide everybody else here real quick so we can see what we're doing. Double click him, we'll call him AO. Okay. And we're going to add a fill. And we just need color information. There are other ways to get this stuff out of here, but click and drag on your ambient occlusion map over here, drop him in the base color. Give it a second to process. Okay. Now let's go ahead and duplicate. You can do a control D, that's fine. Okay. Click on him and curves. 
and change the fill and use our curvature map. Okay, cool. So, and he'll come into play here in a second after we uh, do everything else here. So go ahead and save your file out again. But as you can see, our uh, material IDs have done a marvelous job, giving us a lot more detail to look at. So now all that hard work that you did in ZBrush isn't for nothing. Uh, so whereas before it gave you some decent normals and all right ambient occlusion, but now that you have the panel lines, it's just rock solid now. So I thought it was a much better way of doing it, and that's why I'm sharing it with you today. So we are still saving here. Okay, here we go. All right, we're done saving here. So we can see our emissives are working quite nicely. They'll be more prominent in uh, Sketchfab or in Marmoset, which we'll be going into here in just a few. And what I want you guys to do, I need, before we uh, go anywhere, let's go ahead and raise everything to 4096. Because I'm going to show you a little bug that's going on right now. It's kind of contagious, so... We're going to let that process real quick. Okay, it's done processing now, and as you can see, uh, there's something wrong here. We're now at 4096, but our texture layers aren't, aren't uh, correct. So, um, everything is correct. It's the masks. Some of the masks are uh, not working correctly. Quick, easy fix. Just find that emissive layer real quick, or any, anything with a mask and just go in and do a quick update on it. So we're just going to reselect that little section there. There it goes. Now it'll start processing. So when it's done here, everything should be correct. It's a little bug in the system. Not sure what it is. I submitted it the other day, so we'll see if they get that fixed in the next update. They do update this software quite often. Uh, it's pretty... Uh, quick progress that they've made with this and there we go everything's back to normal so while we are in our 4k res here as you can see we got a lot more detail to our uh, geometry so it's really you can see how clear those textures are and how nicely uh, those panel lines look now with that nice material ID it did a fantastic job with it. It actually match it, matches the normal. So much better, much, much better. All right, so now we're going through the export process. Uh, the previous video, I did go to Sketchfab. This time, we are going to go to Marmoset. So basically, set up your channels, document channels plus normal. That's one of the configurations there. And we will, let me uh, find my... Uh, directory here and then I always change it down to JPEG I'm not horribly concerned about uh, compression too much compression there they are 4096 maps so you're not gonna have too many artifacts I've never seen any so we're gonna go with the document size at 4096 you can update it to whatever size you want uh, but I want to do it now because the masks are correct and it'll generate it correctly. So go ahead and hit export. Shouldn't take long because everything's already processed at 4096, so it should be done here in a second. All right, already done. So we can open up the folder here. We can take a look at everything. So here's our base color. Here's our emissive height metallic, our normal, everything turned out fantastically, so our uh, roughness, pretty cool. The only thing it doesn't do is it doesn't send out 
uh, ambient occlusion and curves, which I wish it would. And I have not, I don't think there is a way to export these out regularly. Uh, it will do it in a, under the Sketchfab uh, export. It'll it'll send out an ambient occlusion, but they haven't quite made a configuration for it yet. So we have to just do a couple things. You remember how we made those curves and AO down here? So we'll just turn everybody off. This may take a second to reprocess everything. Alright, we're done processing here. Uh, we'll go back down to export textures. I've made up my own configuration, uh, which is this AO one here. Uh, we can go, let me see, configuration, go to AO. There we go. Uh, this is basically what it is. I just went in there and I changed this prefix to AO, and it's just capturing the base color. Which is all it really is. It's just uh, it's just going to capture the base color right now, which is curves. And I've got this one down here set for curves, so it names them correctly. So I'll go back up here since my top one is curves. I'm going to select it to curves, and then export. Done. Okay. And then we'll export one. Let me turn off curves. Now it's just ambient occlusion, so export textures. You can look in the documentation on how to set up all these things, and I think there's one or two tutorials on Algorith Algorithmics website or on YouTube. Uh, it shows you how to set these all up here. You can do your predefined and all that. So I may have to play with this a little more to figure it out. So now we've got. Let me go back to this and change it to AO, so it names it correctly. Export. Now open folder. Alright, so there's our ambient occlusion. And there's our curves. Cool beans. Alright. So now we have got all that set up. We can go back... Uh, Substance Painter. We don't need to be in Substance Painter anymore, so you can go ahead and close him down. And we will pick this up over in Marmoset. Alright, here we are in Marmoset. It's been a week or two since I played in here, so we're going to kind of wing it. We'll go ahead and do New Scene. Uh, cancel. We just need to go Import Model. And let me go Recent Places. Make sure I'm going... There we go. And we just need that demo one again. All right, looking good already. So let's go ahead and get our normals in here. First, we have to drag a the default material to that very top of the stack there, because it has all these little groups in here, and that's all the UV shells. Okay, so now we've got our base material. So let's click on surface over here and let's go find all our materials. Let me see if I get that gimbal off there. There we go. Surface and recent places should be in here. There he is. And we're looking for a normal map. Doop, 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 doop. There he is. Okay. A little bubbly right there. Mm. We will continue on here. Let's see. Let's go. We want to find our albedo right here. That would be our base color. Okay. Reflectivity. Uh, cancel him. We want to change him to metalness. Open up our metal. Our microsurface here needs to be our roughness. That 
looking too bad. Uh, change your reflection down here to GGX. That's going to get more accurate results, more like the results you had in Substance Painter. Uh, let's open up Occlusion and just click on that little right tab there. And here's where our ambient occlusion and our cavity map come into play. And you only need to click it once. I keep on hitting it twice. That's why it's beeping at me. Uh, all right. And then your cavity. Ah, oh, stop it. Or your curves in this case. Kind of made everything a little dark there, the way the curves came out. It's alright. It's already looking quite a bit like that. Uh, let's open up Emissive and change him to Emissive. And then you can load your Emissive map in. There we go. Got our Emissive map in there. Looking good, looking good. Uh, and that was, that's really it. Uh, you can go in here and fine-tune some of these things. Just kind of do what I do. I just go in here and start messing with things. Like horizontal smoothing. We can go into the main camera and start uh, messing with things. Uh, we can turn on the flare. keep the threshold down there. Give it a little flare off of everything. Let's see. We can activate the bloom. Lower that down a little bit. Add a vignette if you want. Let's see, you can also turn on depth of field. Where's that sucker at? Focus, focus. There we go. You turn on depth of field. And you can't see him, right? Okay, let me zoom him in here so you can see him better. And you can do focus distance. Try to find the center of that bad boy. And then you can change the near blur. You can lower him down so we see him up close. go up to doo, 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 doo. let's click on the sky we can add a light in here all you have to do is just kind of click on the canvas uh, on this little picture here it'll add a light to the scene we zoom out let's see skylight let me select him there he is change him to a spotlight oops change him to spot and you can do some rotation and move everything around it's a little cumbersome let me turn off depth of field for a minute there we go so I can see what I am doing. See if I'm affecting anything here. There we go. Now we got some life in here. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and we can see if we just do Control D. Yep. Cool. 
I'm not quite proficient with the uh, marmoset just yet. Sorry. Whoa, that's bright. So let's turn down his brightness quite a bit. Zoom in, and let's go ahead. We can turn our uh, depth of field back on and see where we stand with that. Cool. Now, a cool thing with uh, Marmoset, uh, just like in uh, Substance Painter right now, uh, you can export out what's what's called a Marmoset viewer, which is really cool. You can uh, send out your you can send out your model and people can view it online, rotate it around and all that. I know uh, over on artstation.com they uh, support it so you can just drag and drop your file over there and it's really super simple so let's just do uh, viewer export and I'm not gonna get crazy with this here I'm not gonna go into names and all that so texture quality high all that export it takes just a second or two to export it let me go see if I can find it out here I think this is the one we just made that's it yeah it's like under seven megabyte file oh need to click the HTML first not the actual file. And there we go. You can open it up. And there's your file that you can show off to all your friends. Just like any other program, you can rotate the lights around. It's pretty cool. So that's about it for today, guys. Uh, I hope you have fun with this model. Uh, definitely uh, tell people where you got it from. And uh, show off, uh, you know, send them my way. I'm happy to help everybody out there. So we will see you next time. You got any questions, definitely hit me up here on YouTube or Google+, Facebook, or ZBrush Central. I'm happy to answer your questions if I know what the answer is. If not, I will try to find it. And we will see you in the next tutorial.